Hi, welcome to Maggie Chats Books. Today I'm going to do my mid-month wrap-up. In the first half of November, I read four books. Of these four books, two had a pretty heavy subject matter, so that's my excuse for only reading four books. But the first book I read was A Clockwork Dynasty by Daniel H. Wilson. This is the first book that I read by this author. It takes place in the uh, current time and also flashes back into the 1700s in Russia and even in China in about the 1500s. So this book is about robots or automats as they call them in the book. They were created as figures for gifts to kings and religious figures in 1500s and they became human-like. So by modern day they are very human-like and they find a young woman who is a repairer of the robots, the antique ones, and she helps them to defeat a person that is trying to destroy them. Kind of complicated explanation of this book, but it was quite good. I really enjoyed it. I liked the concept that the robots were older than humans because most robot books you read are there. They are more modern. So they had a lot of history to them and it, they were quite interesting characters as well as the main character who helps to repair them. Uh, as I said, this first book that I read by this author, I have since gotten Robo... Apocalypse, I think it is. It's the first in a trilogy, if I'm not mistaken, so I want to read more by this author, and I think I gave this book four stars. The next book I read was part of Nonfiction November, and that was Hunger by Roxane Gay. This book, I think, has been discussed more than any book on BookTube. It is a memoir of her uh, rape when she was a child, and its impact on her body and the way she feels about her body how she feels about food, how she feels about her size, her physical strength, her mental strength, and things like that. It is a very powerful book. If you ever followed Roxane Gay on Twitter or seen her interviewed, she is very honest and open about her life. She doesn't hold back anything. This book will make you sad. It will make you so angry that the person that did commit the act is now a successful businessman and also that she still, of course, suffers from the impacts of what happened to her when I believe she was around 12. I highly recommend this book. I think it addresses a lot of things, whether a person has gone through a trauma or not, that people, especially females, have issues with their body through other issues or things that have happened to them. Um, very powerful book. I will say this does not give you that. This is my before picture. This is my after picture kind of ending. I think it's a true life just struggle that she experiences every day. Recommend this book four stars. The next book I read was also a nonfiction book and it was Chernobyl Prayer. This book is a journalist goes and interviews people who were impacted by their Chern the Chernobyl disaster. It took me the longest time to read because there's so many things in here that just make you have to stop reading it. It's just so tragic and if you're like me and you've seen a lot of documentaries about Chernobyl, they mostly focus on the actual disaster and the cleanup and they really don't put the human factor into it other than that it's dangerous to humans. It shows how much of the disaster was covered up and humans suffered without knowledge of what was going on. Um, that the first responders took like 14 days to die and there are people that came in for the cleanup and only became sick a year later. The impact of children. The first story alone in here is just so devastating and they just get worse and worse even to the point where soldiers came back from Afghanistan and then helped with the cleanup and they describe it worse than war because it's happening at their home. Really powerful book. Highly recommend this one though it is a difficult read. Uh, four stars and this was also our Read Around the World book club book that we did for November and it was a good pick because it really made you think and made you more aware of what went on during that disaster. And after reading those two heavy books, I thought I would give nonfiction a rest for a bit and I read Illuminae, The Illuminae Files 101 and this is by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is a science fiction book, it's YA 
as well. And I had downloaded the audiobook from the library in July to, re to listen to on a trip. But as I listened to it, I realized I was missing out on a lot of things because it's emails and it's transcripts and it's really a report you're, you're supposed to be reading. So you get all these things within the report, which you just can't do through audio. And so I decided to return the book to the library, the audio book, and then get the actual book. And I'm glad I did because it's really enjoyable for a science fiction novel written in a different way. And this is a story of two teen teenagers that are on a planet that's a mining colony. It's attacked by a beta corporation. The survivors from the colony get on spaceships and they try to leave. The beta corporation follows them on a spaceship called Lincoln and attempts to intercept them and destroy them. So these two teenagers are separated on two different ships and they correspond back and forth and try to work their own way into helping solve the problems with the beta corporation. Within this, there's an AI presence on the ship that starts working almost against the colonies and working against the spaceships and what they want to do. So the AI becomes aware pretty much. And so you see them, the people battling the AI as well as trying to get away from the Beta Corporation. Very interesting book. Love the characters. Love the character of the AI presence as well named Adrian, I think it is. And I uh, thought it was a great book. A lot of twists in this book, which I found very enjoyable. Not too much romance, which was kind of nice, because sometimes YA gets too much in romance that I don't enjoy that much. A lot of science fiction. thought this was really good. This is the first in the series. The next one is Gemma. It's already out. And then the next book is Obsidico, I believe it is, and that comes out next year. So good one. I give this one four stars as well. So those are my books that I've read so far this month. Not too many, but some heavy ones, as I said. If you're reading these, please let me know what you thought. I will talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye.